Welcome back to Genuine Core guys. This is the third video in the JDBC tutorial series and in the last video we have made a successful connection to our MySQL database and the database user was MyDB. So coming back to the MySQL workbench you can see I have my MyDB database and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table here and inside that table I'm going to add some extra name so something like that then i will get or retrieve that table's contents from here from the program so let us come back to the mysql workbench and i'm going to create a new table so going to the create table after right clicking and i have to give a table name so i'm going to give the name as users so the database name is I mean the table name is users and inside that I am going to create a column and I think you are already familiar with the basic database concept in a relational database like MySQL the entire data is stored as a table and the table name is users and the table has just one column in my case and uh, as the data gets uh, more and more complex you can add much more columns here so for my column is name the column name is name and the data type is not int. I want to store string data. So for storing string data, there is a nice option available worker and inside that you have to give maximum number of characters that you are expecting for each entry. So I'm going to give it as 100 which means the maximum length of a name that you can insert into the database will be 100. And uh, there is a data type called the car and the difference between, I mean if you do this something like just car it is it is okay it, it should work but it low, takes uh, this is less memory efficient because it allocates 100 bytes for each name entry regardless whether it is just two character or three character so what i'm going to do is i'm using this worker database that is just mysql concept if you are unfamiliar just read uh, the tutorials point tutorial on mysql or just database dbms so that's fine i just want one column i don't want this how can i remove it delete selected okay. delete selected no, that's not possible so I'm just i'm going to press apply here so i'm going to create and uh, i'm i since i can't <laughs> delete that column from the i'm going to edit this code by a little bit and I'm going to remove that user column entry because I can't get rid of that from the user interface. So create table my database dot users, which is, which means inside the my database we are creating a users table, and for that table there is an entry called name, which is worker type that can store string, and not null means each time you apply an insert operation you have to give value. You will <coughs> understand that later. So I'm just going to apply it. So SQL script was successfully applied to the database. So now in say the table section, we have a users table and in say the column section, we have a column called name. Now what I want to do is, I want to do some raw SQL operation. I want to insert data. So let's come to here. No, create a new SQL tab for executing query. So I'm just executing a query to insert some data into the table so for inserting data into a mysql table you can use insert in the command and insert into table name the name of the table is users so that's fine users and you have to give this a keyword values and instead of that i'm going to add some names let the first name be genuine coder yes so that's fine <coughs> and i'm going to execute it by pressing here so inserting values one row affected which means i have successfully inserted one value into the table so uh, now there are many options to see the contents are present inside this table mysql provides uh, sorry uh, sql provides uh, the select star from method for selecting all data from the table so select star from users and i am going to press this button and as you can see there is one entry in the table that is genuine quarter and i want to add some more data so i'm going for insert into users and the value should be inserting to users and the values should be 
first I insert the genome code then that will be a J that seems to be a nice name and that's it's successful then um, Christopher okay so I have inserted three and now let us let, have a look into the table select this char from users and I'm going to press here as you can see there are three names Ajay, Christopher and Jeremy Coder. so the database is working the table is working what we have to do is we have to get those data from our program and for that uh, there is a concept called prepare scheme and I will um, talked about that later before that I just want to execute this command which is select star from users I want to execute this command from my program so that I will get the enter names so uh, for that you have to create a, an object a statement object so a statement a statement, a statement object allows us to uh, do operations on the database coming back to the slide you can see the third step is create a statement object so let's do that uh, st stmt equals con dot create statement so now we got a statement and uh, the fourth step is execute a query so a query is something uh, is anything that uh, gives us data I mean this is a query the select star from users is a query and uh, for that we can use stmt.execute there are a lot of operation uh, we will see that later first we are going for execute query and inside that I am going to give select star from users so that's the same query we have used in the MySQL workbench and we have to definitely access the result the result is in the form of result set object so result set oh my god result set rs equals stmt dot execute query now the rs object contains the three names which are which is present in the users table what we want is we have to fetch each name by name so while rs dot names this is the no common method used to access all the rows uh, so uh, while as dot next means if there is one more row to be read from the result set object so if there is only one name as dot next will be true for just one iteration so we will get just one name and I'm going to fetch the name so string name equals as dot get and you can see that there are different types of I mean get string there is the there is a get string method which is used to add, read string data from a particular column if uh, you have saved an integer value then there is a method called get int if you store some kind of float value then there is float if you store some kind of timestamp value which is the date plus time uh, there is a get timestamp and there is all kind of get methods present in the result set object so in our case we just want that get string so we can either give the in column index I mean if there are three columns in the table then we can just give get string from zero to first column second column third column etc the first column is one remember that I usually go for setting zero and it throws some exception so in my case I am going to set zero uh, remember uh, no it's one remember this is equivalent to giving the name of the column <clears throat> it is a better idea to always give the column name because uh, in some case if you rearrange the order of the columns the program will throw some error so let's go for setting that name <clears throat> so now the name will be stored in the name variable and I'm going to display the name so system.out.println name now let us run the program let us hope that this one works and you can see that there is Ajay, Christopher and Jeremy Corder guys so that's how you get data from the database the power of database is not just accessing it suppose you want to uh, access the name of users which starts from lecture A which is Ajay then <clears throat> you can use the command words name like then you can go for percentage a percentage this one means I have to select all the users from the table where the name 
like means uh, then uh, it's just a equal to check uh, where the name star from a the percentage symbol means anything that starts with a and the rest of the substring is ignored so that is common mysql syntax if you don't know about uh, sql syntax just read tutorials point tutorial or some better book because uh, in the future you will definitely have to make use of the database so before that i'm just going to execute it here to make sure that my core is correct so you can see that there is only a j result because there is only one person having the name starting with a so i'm going to execute the program right here and you can see that i got a j so that's it guys that how you get results from a database returning at MySQL. So I hope this video helped you to learn something about database operations. As always, thank you for watching this video. And for more videos, like this video and subscribe.